welcome to the African Legal Matters Show. We discuss the laws of different lands. We discuss how different legal matters need to be dealt with and how they are interpreted in law. So, Tatena, can you maybe just give us insight first into what we're going to be talking about today? Okay, so today we are going to be talking about the different um, types of marriage contracts that are found in South Africa. Uh, we do have the marriage in community of property. We do have the one which is called marriage out of community of property with accrual and marriage out of community of property without accrual. That's great. Thank you. So before we go into today's discussion, just a follow up from, you know, our previous discussion on the types of marriages and where you spoke about customary law, customary marriage, sorry, and that uh, when one needs to get um, married, say, to a second uh, wife or a second partner, uh, they need to get a court order. Uh, can, you, can you explain a bit more on that? Because, you know, that's something that some people were asking to say, can you explain what exactly this means and what it means if someone is married without that court order as a second wife? Okay, so... Uh, when they, uh, like we say that when they get married in terms of the customary law, they get a certificate. Uh, that is when they get registered within three months um, after the celebration. So when they get their certificate, they can choose to say, do we want to get married in community of property or out of community of property? Now, uh, I also mentioned that the man, in terms of the customary law, can change to say that now I want to get married to a second wife. So now if he wants to get married to a second wife, he then goes to court and gets a court order. In this court order, um, it is going to tell them how their marriage is, um, is going to be regulated in terms of the property. Yes, how it's going to be distributed fairly between um, the new spouse and the existing spouse together with the husband in case of death. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now on to today's discussion of the types of marriage contracts. Can you maybe just start by explaining before we look into the types, what a marriage contract is? It is just like any other contract. A marriage, it has also its terms and contracts. How do you I mean, terms and conditions, how do you want your marriage to be run? What are the, the pros and cons? What are the limits? You know, how far should we go? I will start by the one which we, we is much more popular, the marriage in community of property. So uh, when you get married, in terms of the marriage in community of property, it means that all your assets um, form what they call a joint estate or it's now called a common estate. What is mine becomes ours. So you, the debt, they are ours, the, the account it becomes ours, everything becomes ours in terms of the marriage um, in community of property. But then the advantage with this kind of uh, marriage in community of property is that it um, creates financial security in, in both spouses, yes. And, uh, um, maybe is it, when you say financial security, because I heard you say the debts are also yours. Because so, if someone took a loan that they didn't pay back uh, before we get we got married, you are saying now this loan becomes a, a, a joint loan between both of us. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you inherit um, the debts, and you also inherit the benefits, whatever that that person had. It's, it just forms part of that um, common estate. All right. And then the other type of contracts? Okay. And uh, maybe quickly before we, we go in the um, other type of marriage contracts, the, the, on, the disadvantage of this type of um, marriage contract is that um, in terms of uh, maybe one spouse gets sequestrated. So by sequestrated, I mean that the creditors come after uh, one spouse. Uh, it means that the creditor or the creditors they come and um, feast on 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 that joint estate. It is also one of the disadvantage of um, 
of marriage in a community of prophets. One partner gets a loan um, of one million. When the creditors come, they will come for your joint estate. And so, so tell me there, but once they are married, or once you're married, are you, is it legal to, if someone gets a loan without the other one knowing, uh, are they still bound to it? Uh, so when, when you are married in community of property, um, there are things that um, the spouse cannot do without the other. Like um, land alienation, uh, property acquisition, you need the consent of of the other spouse. But then there are things that are probably to do with, with your, your profession. You don't need um, the consent of the other spouse. So what I'm basically saying is that um, when the creditors are coming or, yeah, in the event that you become insolvent as an individual, it affects the joint estate. And I, and I think this is where we start saying, you know, for more information, you can email law at baobabchats.com <laughs> to get more insight or if you have got, you know, more questions to fully understand this, because I think we can't maybe dissect it, you know, fully, but I think there is quite a lot that one would want to ask. Like now I feel like maybe, you know, we need to talk about, you know, can someone get into any form of contract if they're in a community of property? Can, you know, what does it mean, the extended family? What does it mean if someone brought children from another marriage? What, so there's a lot of other, you know, questions one can bring in, which we can't really uh, uh, break down all today. So maybe let's go on to the, to the next type of contract. Okay, we do have uh, the one which is called out of community of property without accrual. So by accrual, I mean to say that if at all during the subsistence of your marriage, um, or there is wealth increase. That is what we call accrual. So they can be out of community of property with accrual and without accrual. So I'm going to talk about the one without accrual. So in this one, um, I've heard somebody saying that you are married, but you are financially single, which means that whatever is mine belongs to me. My debts are mine. My account is mine. My assets are mine. And then whatever is yours belongs to you. Yeah. That is the and, and how do you make sure then that in the marriage, what is yours to remain as your, yours? Is that is that part of now what is part of the terms and conditions of this contract? Because I'm, I'm trying to think if we're going to buy a TV, uh, a television set that we're going to use, does it mean that I must keep the receipt and show that this was bought from my bank account? If we're going to buy a couch and we keep a receipt that shows that this was purchased from a different bank account. Okay. So in this type of um, marriage contract, you do sign what is called an antinuptial contract. Some call it a prenup. Um, some call it um, an antinuptial contract. So in that type of contract, that's when you, you stipulate that, you know what, whatever I'm going to buy, it's, it's going to belong to me. Whatever he buys, it belongs solely, exclusively to him. Um, usually people recommend that type of marriage to those ones that might have been getting in a second marriage or third marriage, or preferably if you are... Um, um, sound in terms of your income, you are well financially, then yeah, people like that are the ones that prefer this type of marriage contract. Okay. And can we talk about the, the one uh, with accrual? Okay. So the marriage out of community of property with accrual, it says that what we have accrued during the subsistence of our marriage it belongs to both of us. So then, but then in this type of marriage, there are some things that um, you exclude. For example, you can say that donations, they do not form part of um, accrual. Uh, my inheritance, um, general damages, they do not form part, for, part of accrual. And then upon dissolution, either by death or divorce, then that is equally distributed um, between the two. So let's say, for example, um, the husband accumulated 8 million 
and the wife accumulated six million. So that difference, the two million, is then shared between the two. So they get seven, seven each. Is it also possible that people can say it's with a crow, but at different percentages? That whatever we earn, the other one will take seventy percent, the other one thirty percent, or once it's with a crow, it's standard. Or that now depends on the pre antinuptial contract. Well, that that would depend on the, on the um, antinuptial contract. It depends on the um, antinuptial contract. And also another thing with, with um, out of community of property, you can even decide to say that um, what I had before marriage, before we got married, let's say I had property, it strictly belongs to me. So what we have during um, our marriage, then that we can share. As long as we have um, deducted the donations, um, general damages, yeah, and the inheritance. There is a number of people that just get married and never think about these contracts or never have a discussion at all about these contracts. What is what is the default? If you just say, I'm married, you know, we went to court, we got married, or whichever form of uh, marriage it is, or a church, what, what is the default contract? Okay, so basically, um, okay, it is deemed to be in community of property. If you do not have, as long as there is no antinatural contract, it is marriage in community of property. However, there are instances where we do have an antinatural contract which is vague or, yeah, it's inconsistent or in, 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 uh, not coherent. Then that one, the court can decide. We, we do have um, several court um, cases where they looked at the antinatural contract and they say that, no, this is null and void because it's vague, then it is then considered to be in community of property. Yeah, so the default, as long as there's no ANC, it's in community of property. Okay. All right, now that's, that's great. So, and now is it possible to change from one type of contract to the other? Or say someone got married, they didn't have a contract, like you say, it's defaulted that it's in community of property, but they now want it to be out of commuter property or with a crew or without a crew or they got married out of commuter property. They now want it to be, you know, um, one way or the other. Is it possible to change? And what does one have to do to do that? Okay, yeah. So it is possible uh, to, to change from one form of contract to the other. So you have to apply to court, but they, you need to give sound reasons. Why are you changing? And um, are you not going to, to prejudice another partner in, in changing that? So it can be a joint application. In most cases, it's a joint application. And in some instances, it can be in, 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 in an ex parte uh, application where one person um, applies to say that I want um, to change. As long as you give sound reasons, and 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 you have to be in agreement, both parties. You have to be in agreement, both parties. Or alternatively, one person can apply. That's the one that I said. It's an ex parte application where one person applies to say that um, I wish to to change. Just yeah, to actually, actually, whilst you're there, because you mentioned that, what must one do then? you know, before they get married, do you advise from a legal standpoint that do you go to a lawyer? Do you go to your pastor? Do you go to any legal office? Is it any lawyer who can advise you on this? Or, you know, what what, what should be the advice on here? Well, I would advise um, people, uh, partners, to go and seek legal counseling. Like, uh, you need to go to a lawyer who really knows about this, especially family lawyers. Not wow, that's, that, that is great. And um, maybe uh, also, like I said earlier, you can send an email to law at um, Baobab Chats and Tatenda will be more than welcome to also re respond um, and clarify or refer you to, to the right people that can, that can help you. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Tatenda. What can we expect in the next, uh, in the next uh, episode? Okay, so in the next episode, we are going to be dealing with divorce. So please, this is a must not miss. Make sure you are there or you are there.
<laughs> All right, great, uh, great stuff. And thank you so much uh, for joining. Uh, please remember to share uh, with others information. It's great. Uh, we are here to share information to, you know, develop ourselves as Africans, to share knowledge and find a way to make sure that we can develop as a whole. Uh, and from myself and the Baobab Chats team, thank you so much and uh, goodbye.